Coming up on 5-Minute News. Trump orders GOP to shut down government and defund prosecutors. Kamala Harris to lead first office of gun violence prevention. And Jair Bolsonaro denies proposing coup to Brazilian military leaders. It's Friday, September 22. I'm Anthony Davis. With House Speaker Kevin McCarthy's latest funding plan in ruins and lawmakers leaving town for the weekend, there's no end game in sight as hard right Republicans push dangerously closer to a disruptive federal shutdown. Republican Kevin McCarthy has repeatedly tried to appease his hard right flank by agreeing to the steep spending cuts they're demanding to keep the government open. But cheered on by Donald Trump, the Republican frontrunner for president next year, the Conservatives have all but seized control in dramatic fashion. In a crushing defeat on Thursday, a handful of Republican hardliners blocked a typically popular defence bill from advancing. The second time this week it was set back, an unheard of loss for a House Speaker. Even a stopgap bill to keep government funded past the September 30th deadline, called a Continuing Resolution, or CR, is a non-starter for some on the right flank who have essentially seized control of the House. This is a whole new concept of individuals who just want to burn the whole place down, McCarthy said after Thursday's vote, acknowledging he was frustrated. The open revolt was further evidence that McCarthy's strategy of repeatedly giving in to the far right is seemingly only emboldening them, allowing them to run roughshod over their own House majority. Their bills have almost no chance in the Senate. Meanwhile, Donald Trump urged them to hold the line against the higher funding levels McCarthy had agreed to with President Joe Biden earlier this year and to end the federal criminal indictments against him. This is also the last chance to defund these political prosecutions against me and other patriots, Trump wrote on social media. They failed on the debt limit, but they must not fail now. Use the power of the purse and defend the country, the disgraced former president wrote. Last week, Donald Trump ordered House Republicans in Congress to launch an impeachment inquiry into President Joe Biden, and they complied, setting an impeachment hearing two days before the government will shut down. The Biden administration has announced the nation's first federal office of gun violence prevention. In a statement released yesterday, the White House said the office will be overseen by Kamala Harris's office, directed by Stephanie Feldman, a longtime Biden gun policy advisor and deputy directed by Greg Jackson and Rob Wilcox, who have led national prevention efforts through the Community Justice Action Fund and Every Town for Gun Safety, respectively. The creation of this office is a continuation of the administration's work on preventing high-profile mass shootings and local homicides that primarily affect lower-income black and Latino communities. In the absence of that sorely needed action, the Office of Gun Violence Prevention, along with the rest of my administration, will continue to do everything it can to combat the epidemic of gun violence that is tearing our families, our communities and our country apart, Biden said in the announcement. Throughout his presidency, Biden has used executive action to regulate homemade firearms known as ghost guns in the same way as traditional firearms and to clarify who counts as a gun seller and thus is required by law to conduct background checks. Last year, he also signed the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, a sweeping piece of legislation that, among other things, tightens background checks and bolsters mental health programs. Biden has advocated for reinstating the national assault weapons ban and expanding background checks since he was vice president. An historic increase in gun homicides in 2020 pushed community-based violence prevention further up the administration's agenda. 
It has been at crisis level for a long time, and COVID-19 brought unprecedented spikes to cities across the country. Those spikes and his response to our calls for a new approach really took shape in 2020, said Fatima Lauren Drier, the executive director of the Health Alliance for Violence Intervention, a national organisation working with hospitals to build and support violence prevention programmes for gunshot wound victims. Former Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro denied a report yesterday claiming he consulted with top military leaders on staging a coup to stop Lula da Silva from assuming the presidency last January. Three members of Bolsonaro's legal team said in a statement posted on social media channels that the far-right leader never took any measure that conflicted the boundaries and assurances established by the Constitution. Earlier in the day, the newspaper O Globo reported that a former Bolsonaro aide said in a plea bargain testimony that the then-president talked with the commanders of Brazil's army, navy and air force about overthrowing the results of last year's election won by Lula. Bolsonaro's legal team also said he did not take any action that violated the law during his 2019 through 2022 administration. Bolsonaro has been targeted by several investigations since he left office, including one looking into whether he played any role in his supporters rioting the capital of Brasilia and breaking into government buildings last January. 5-Minute News is an evergreen podcast covering politics, inequality, health and climate, delivering independent, unbiased and essential world news daily.